Jordan, I am so excited to talk with you today. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, be the solution. So, Jordan, you are a member of the BIA and you also sit on the board for them. How long have you been on the board? I've been on the board for the BIA for coming up on three years. That's fantastic. And so UDA, which is the Urban Developers Association, Philadelphia, was born about three years ago, two years ago? About what two years ago. It's been almost two years. Okay, so let's dive into that a little bit. Let's uh, tell our listeners a little bit about what the UDA is, uh, what the purpose of it is, and what's your involvement? Yeah, absolutely. So the UDA was founded by Rick Young, who's a, a great friend of mine. He's also a board member of the BIA as well. It was founded about two years ago, and the whole premise behind it, the whole mission behind it is to bring more diversity and inclusion into the building industry space is to make sure that in a majority minority city like Philadelphia with all this development that's going on in the communities we just want to make sure that that development involves people from within the community people that are black brown can also be a part of that development and those great opportunities uh, that are going on around us oh absolutely I think that is um well one you know that I attend and I'm part of the UDA. So I believe in the mission of what the UDA stands for and bringing in more people that match really the, the fabric of the people in Philadelphia. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's critical because our neighborhoods are changing and a lot of it, I would say, is for the better. You know, we don't deserve to live in blight. We don't um, want to live in areas that are run down. Yeah. Um, so we love to see the development, but it's just important to make sure that we're a part of that process and we don't get pushed out through that process. So the UDA is just really intentional about bringing a lot of resources, um, a lot of education pieces, a lot of organizing to uh, to make sure that we could be a big part of this change, too. Yeah, I love it. One of the things I was really impressed, Jordan, that you did is by sponsoring, I believe it was. Uh, 10 new members, developers into the BIA. Is that correct? Yeah. So I sponsor 10 individuals that are up and coming real estate developers to get into the BIA. The BIA offers a lot of value, a lot of resources, a lot of like those, uh, what I like to call like nuance pieces of education or know how to be able to succeed in the real estate game. Um, so it's just really important to make sure that uh, members of my community are at the table, too. So sometimes you got to put your money where your mouth is and um, and bring your people into the room as well. Yeah, that's that's excellent. So that happened about what would you say, six, nine months ago? About four or five months ago. OK, so this year. Yeah, yeah this year. And you're also bringing in through um, different programs. So talk a little bit about, you know, the programs and what kind of education they're receiving. Yeah. So, I mean, education and like, and knowledge changes things. And so my last 10 years of my life, I've uh, spent being really intentional about sharing the knowledge and the things I've been able to learn within the industry. Um, just to take it back a little bit, you know, I was born and raised in Philly. Um, my mother raised us. She's a single mom. And my family found success and was able to overcome poverty through the construction industry and through um, eventually real estate investment and being within the building industry. And so the biggest piece that helped me to be able to go from a, a family business out of the trunk of a car with a bucket full of tools from the pawn shop into a lot of notoriety, a lot of awards in the luxury design build space and the commercial construction space and the real estate development space has always been the education. Uh, every credential I went back to school to get, I went back to school to become a, a electrician, eventually becoming a licensed master electrician. I went back to school for construction management. I went back to school to learn design i went back to school to become an osha trainer and all these pieces every time i went back and got a piece of education 
I've seen my, my life um, elevate. I've seen my opportunities elevate. So, you know, there's that direct correlation between like education, certification, and all those pieces that really helped my life to become so much better. And so the last 10 years, as I've been growing, I've just been, been trying to be really intentional about bringing as many people with me. And so I've launched workforce development programs that have trained young adults to get into the construction industry with an emphasis on like the skilled trades, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, um, and entrepreneurship, because not just the working with our hands, but working with our minds within the real estate space, it's been the same thing. I was able to learn a lot and grow a lot through education. So we've been intentional with different programs like Jumpstart Germantown and now the UDA and my Buy Back the Block program to just bring as much education and resources to the community as possible. But bring it in a way where it is high level information, like the nuanced information, but in a way that like the community can resonate with. So that's been the the goal and the efforts that's been going on over the last 10 years. And it's just been really fun to just gain as many allies along the way and people that are like minded. So now a lot of it these days for me is about combining forces. So the BIA is doing amazing things to help push forward diversity and inclusion. So I want to be a part of it. The UDA is doing amazing things to push diversity and inclusion. I want to be a part of it. Jumpstart Philly and all these other programs um, that are doing great things that bring that real education um, is really changing the game. So I don't really put it all under like under me or under my own accord. I'm just, there's a bunch of different pieces that we have in place and we're just trying to make sure that it all just gets to the community to change people's lives. It definitely is something knowledge is power. So the more knowledge you have, and it's not just knowledge, but using the knowledge that you have and connecting connecting others together, being in contribution. That's what I see you do in Jordan, being in contribution in the community and giving back, not just only of knowledge and, and but your time um, and your great energy. So tell me more about what is a, the Buy the Block program? Buy Back the Block. So Buy Back the Block. Buy Back the Block. So that's my one of my personal brands, um, one of my personal movement. It just signifies that you know we're buying into our neighborhoods we're investing into our neighborhoods we're investing into our communities and when we say buy back buy back meaning these have always been our communities right and with gentrification the, the no matter how you feel about it the communities are changing um a lot for the better but also through the displacement a lot for the, for the worse as well and so buy back the block is making sure that we're buying land, we're buying assets, we're owning our homes within our communities so that you know we're a part of this generational wealth and this development of our communities that's, that's, that's being built. And so um, the Buy Back the Block program, the Buy Back the Block movement that we have placed in here in Philadelphia is just all about organizing and just making sure that my people, my community, um, people of all communities own some of the community too and are able to reap the benefits of all the change that's happening and not even just reap the benefits, but lead the change as well. So what are some examples are uh, of that? By so block? this building I'm sitting in right now, this building, I grew up in, in the Mount Airy section of the city uh, along the Chew Avenue corridor. This building I'm actually uh, recording and streaming from right now. This used to be a, uh, a, a, a bar that was like a ran down bar. A uh, Philadelphia police officer was killed right here in this room, not to get all gloomy. You know, there was a lot of drug activity, a lot of hopelessness going on. And I used to walk past this building thousands of times throughout my life to go to the playground across the street. And, you know, buying back the block, buying back the community was like in literal, like I bought a, a, a corner property, a commercial property, mixed use building in my community, turned it all around, uh, built a beautiful project, educated, trained, did workforce development in the process, uh, housed members of the community in the, in the residential spaces and just like restored hope on this corner. This corner used to be blighted, used to be dark, used to be a place where people didn't want to come. 
Now it's bright, it's vibrant. We threw a big mural on the side of the building that um, symbolizes hope and prosperity and power. And yeah, I mean, it's like literally as intentional as that, buying pieces within our community and building them back up better than before. Um, I mean, I bought the uh, commercial properties down the street and building coffee shops and residential properties up the block and building affordable housing. It's, it's literal, like direct investment into the community. And so the big thing is just teaching people to be able to do the same because it's cool to be able to do it on my own. You know, it's good for me, good for my family. But to be able to teach people to do it collectively is just way more impactful. So we're literally buying back pieces of our neighborhood, either that we owned or didn't own and making sure that we were here to stay. Yeah, no doubt it's their strength in numbers. That's for sure. Absolutely. So let's switch gears a little bit to affordable housing. I think a lot of people really don't understand what that means, affordable housing. I think they think it's something that it isn't. So why don't you share with us uh, a little bit more in depthly about affordable housing? Yeah, so I mean, affordable housing is definitely a broad term. And so people kind of get it misconstrued or they have misperceptions of what it actually is. Affordable housing is a broad spectrum of housing that's there to provide opportunity for people of a wide-ish income level. So you have housing that's affordable for low, really low income levels. These are families that are living below $40,000 a year, like at lower ends of the, the median income. Um, then you have affordable housing that's also for what we call like workforce families, like families that are teachers, city workers, um, you know, uh, different in different occupations. They're making 50 to $80,000 a year, sometimes a little more, give or take, but they're still cost burdened by student loan debt, credit card debt, and just all the pieces of inflation out here in this community. And so there's housing opportunities for people that fall into those categories as well. And so affordable housing is comprised of opportunities for people at the really low end of the spectrum all the way up to people that are like workforce kind of working cost burden burden level and i think um i think it's all very necessary but i feel like people sometimes just kind of convoluted all into one thing just thinking that just because the name affordable is there that it's for people who just are at the lowest levels of income um when in reality, it's to be able to service people across like that whole lower end uh, spectrum or even people that are working that are still dealing with cost burden um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, so there's the Turn the Key program that's for probably people who make the higher end of the income, I would think. Would yeah, so Turn turn the Key is a great city program. It's, it's definitely geared more towards like the working uh, the workforce affordability level these are teachers city workers uh people that are making 50 to 80 some thousand dollars a year but just are still in the need of quality housing opportunities i mean in this market with these interest rates and this inflation um a lot of times the middle kind of gets left out and i think turn the key program is doing like a really great job at making sure uh, that there's housing opportunities for people that fall into into that area as well and so the homes that are being built throughout the city they're amazing houses uh the uda has been participating in that program uh, we've been organizing minority developers to participate in that program to provide housing stock and it's also been a beautiful thing because on the back end of that there's community members from the city that are reaping the benefit of purchasing these beautiful homes that are coming with equity uh, that they're able to get into with affordable mortgages. So it's just, it's just overall a beautiful thing. Yeah, turn with the turn the key program, I know that new homeowners are able to get in homes for pretty much almost nothing out of pocket, like a couple two thousand dollars. A few grand, I mean a, a few thousand dollars on average uh, out of pocket to get to the closing table. Uh there's a a, a a soft second mortgage that the city provides that uh, buys down the price of the home. So 
So people are getting brand new construction houses for around $200,000, sometimes even less uh, because of that additional uh, second mortgage that the city is offering. And that second mortgage is non-serviceable, meaning that the buyer doesn't have to pay the mortgage as long as they stay in the house for a period of 15 years to where that mortgage starts falling off. Once they reach the 20 year mark, that mortgage is completely gone. Um, I think that's that's a it's a game changer. It's a game changer because they say in their 15 years, they have the soft second of between 70 and $100,000 and then whatever equity was built in the property. So that could be another, who knows, let's just call it, you know, 50,000, 100,000, $200,000 of, that's like, that's um, game changing for a generation. Absolutely. It's game changing for a generation and uh, it's definitely very much needed. It's, it's very much needed. So I'm, I'm, I'm super happy about the program and super excited to be a part of it. So the, your involvement with um, Jumpstart Germantown, are you mentoring um, students there or? So Jumpstart Germantown helped me uh, back in 2015 or somewhere around then. I was already 12 years plus in the construction industry. And I was doing a lot of construction and building and Jumpstart really helped me to bring together the pieces of real estate investing. And so at that time I had some real estate investing going on, but Jumpstart helped to bring a lot of clarity to like the financing structures of it for me to be able to put it on uh, steroids and take my real estate investing game to the next level. So it played a big part in, 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 in my shifts and my opportunities. So I found myself always uh, still working along with the program. Ken's always been a great mentor of mine. And next thing I knew, I found myself working within the program, doing mentorship, doing uh, the inspections, analyzing deals with the program, and just overall just helping people to uh, grow within the space. And so still to this day, I still do work with the program. It's in a little bit of a lesser capacity, but I still participate on a quarterly basis doing mentorship, doing trainings to uh, make sure that I contribute. Yeah, Ken Weinstein really uh, did something else with that program. I think it was, it was pretty impressive um, how many investors came out of there and learned a tremendous amount to go on and uh, be the solution and build a, a life of their dreams, basically. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... The thing I love the most about the program is, I mean, I see so many people from the community that have gone through it, got educated through the program. And then I see them three, four years later and they're like knee deep in real estate investment. I got so many friends and community members that went through the program and you fast forward three, four years, they're, they're still in the game of real estate and, and, and thriving and doing well. So it's working. Work, work the, work the system, right? Do the work, work. As I always say, work works. Absolutely. Do the work. You put the time in. Put your head down. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Do you? Absolutely. Focus yeah, on my, in, in, my, in my group, we say lead with the work. So our 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 motto is lead with the work. You're not waiting for the perfect opportunities we're not waiting for someone to come and help us we're just doing the work do amazing things and at some point you know pieces start falling in place at some point people want to be a part of it and you just you know we just keep it moving lead with the work i like that lead lead with the work yeah lead with the work yeah yeah what do you see that the biggest issue is that people let get in front of them or moving themselves forward? The biggest thing that people let get in front of them, hmm, I think a lot, I think a lot of times people think things are going to be easier than they're supposed to be. And so they let that discourage them when in reality things take two times, three times, four times as long as you think they're going to. And 
you're usually 10 times harder. And I think like in this society, everybody in the social media w world that we live in, everything looks so easy. So I feel like when people hit those points when they when they find out it's not, they feel discouraged or they feel like something's different for them. When in reality, it's all hard. Like this stuff is all hard. And that level of commitment has to be big, even bigger than you, because um, you're going to hit some walls and you got to be able to hit those walls, get back up and keep going. And I feel like a lot of people lack that because they think things are going to be easier than they are. So when they hit that wall, you know, they didn't think it was supposed to happen. <laughs> and uh, for me, you know, those walls are a part of it. You can't succeed without failing. Absolutely. You got to fail forward. You got to expect to fail. So I think a lot of people get discouraged when they get hit with those failures. But that's a part of the game. So yeah, it's not, not about how many times you fail, but how quickly you can get back up from it and just keep moving. Absolutely. You could spend a week like pouting, right? You could spend a week or two weeks or three weeks doing nothing. You know, you fail, you say, okay, what did I learn? Can I learn something from it? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I got that. Let's not make that mistake again. And let's brush, brush ourselves off and let's keep on going. Start again. Start again. Start again. And I see, especially on this side of the industry and in the brokerage side and real estate sales, most people have like very little capacity to do this. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, real, real estate sales, you're an entrepreneur in all senses of the word a lot. At least that's my perception of it. And I think people think it's, uh, it's going to be a little bit more... Uh, guaranteed i'll say but real estate sales you eat what you kill so you know you got to be ready to hunt gotta be ready to hunt and then you got to know what you're doing absolutely that's right. a part of hunting too but make they sure can hunt, they get the business and then they don't know what to do <laughs> they don't know how to sell it i that's just had a client come in they just signed a deep package and i never met them in person i did the business on the phone they came in and they were signing with uh, Dara, our broker. And there's like, where? they're like, where's Maria? And she's like, she's in the back. She'll be up in a minute. So I come out and I meet them. And I was the third person that they listed with. Mm. Um, yeah, they were expired uh, twice prior to, and actually in Delaware County. And they're like, we're in Delaware. We live in Delaware County. The house is Delaware in Delaware County, and we had to come downtown Philly because you were the only you were the person who could sell the property. Hey, I mean, you definitely have a reputation that precedes itself, and like in this market, I mean, you need you need sharks, so you need people that know what they're doing. So I was, I, I I could see it all day. It's fun stuff, right? But. Look, there's always, I tell people, we get paid to solve problems. The bigger problems you have, the bigger paycheck you get. So look for opportunities to be the solution and to help people solve problems, whether that's regardless of whatever industry you're in. If you're an entrepreneur, you that's otherwise there's somebody else coming alongside you that will pass you by. Absolutely. And there is enough business to go around to everybody. You know, you have to have like a mind of abundance and be in contribution. I see you being in contribution. Yeah, I do my best to be in contribution as much as possible. I think it's really important. Give it all away for free. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of people out here, that scarcity mindset that you speak of as though like your success is going to take away from my success. Like that's a that's that's a loser's mindset for lack of a way to put it like you know winners winners know there's enough out here for everybody especially if you focusing on delivering the best you being delivering the best value it's going to come regardless so I'm, that's I'm, right i'm 100 percent on the same page with you that's a that is 100 percent right give it all away help you always can help somebody else there's always people that need your help they need there's people that you know, where you are right now, 10 years ago. And of course there's more people that, you know, there's people that do more. There's people that do less. It's always going to be that way. That's the way of the world. 
You know? oh, absolutely, absolutely. You think you're rich? There's somebody richer out there. You think you're poor? There's somebody poorer out there. Yeah, I tell people that all the time. People are like, Jordan, you're rich. And I'm like, I'm poor. And they're like, they don't get it. They're like, no, because you have this, you have that. And I'm like, there's levels to this stuff. Like the people that I look up to, the people I aspire to, to be uh, like, you know, there's always somebody that has has more going on and, you know, just being able well, to Well, do you have a PJ? Do I have a, a PJ? Yeah. Not yet. But well. I, but I will. There you go. See? <laughs> yeah, it's always, it's always, there's always new levels. And the thing I always tell people all the time is, you know, compare yourself to yourself. You know, like like competing against other people is 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 a waste of time. You know, com compare yourself to yourself and compare yourself to where you're trying to go. And no matter what level you're on, there's always another level. And no matter what level you're on, when you're trying to make it to that next level, there's going to be a lot of sacrifice. There's going to be a lot of dedication. You know, you're going to have to lock yourself in. Literally, like sometimes you know, not be on the scene for periods of six, seven, eight months, a year, and just go so hard on your craft to break through, to, to get to that next level. And a lot of people, you know, they they get discouraged or they, they don't think that's what's required, you know, and that's the only way you, you have that breakthrough. You got to be able to just, to just completely lock in and focus. Yeah, I like what you said. Comparison is the thief of joy. Don't compare yourself to anybody but yourself. Because when you compare yourself to others, it, it really does. It really rips your joy right out of you. Absolutely. Because you don't know what that where that person started, what their experiences are. You know, the, everybody's different. We're all unique. We have our own path and our own journey to follow. And, and you don't even know if that person is as all of these things that you're making them to be. Cause like people don't have their stuff together as much as it seems. I've always found like the more I've grown, anytime I found myself comparing myself to somebody or even feeling like somebody has, you know, something better or I'm inferior to something that somebody else has going on. The more I've grown, the more I've matured. I've realized that a lot of that was just like a misperception because everybody got some crap going on in their life. Nobody has it together as, as much as you think. And so even in learning that, I'm like, I don't even compare myself to other people because I really don't truly know what's even going on on, on their side of the fence. So I'm no, unless you intimate, unless you know them intimately and you don't know. And even then, you may not even know. Even but, then, even then, you may not really <laughs> you might may not really know. No. And I, I love uh, that you said uh, about locking yourself in your like not in your room, but like. So I, you know, I'm a, I'm at a, level, a certain level and I want to go like on a whole nother thing. And so I was supposed to go to something last night um, and I didn't go. So I'm like, I'm working late. And then today I'm supposed to go to this entrepreneur's table thing at my club. And it's good, you know, entrepreneurs and blah, blah, blah. It's a round table. So it's good. But. I'm like, you know, how am I going to get, I need, I need more hours. So in order to get more hours, I either need to start earlier, which is fine, but you can't call people at like 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. So I can call them at between 5.30 and 7.30, which is what time this event is. Right. So I need more, I need more touches. And more touches and in order to do that you got to spend more time yeah Period. i think every high achieving entrepreneur finds themselves in that scenario where it's like i really want to go and hang out I, you know i really want to go and do this thing because those are the, the feel good things the, the feel good conversations the conversations of grandeur people talking about good ideas like all of those things feel good and I feel like a lot of times entrepreneurs can get trapped in thinking that those things are work. High, high priority or work, right? When in reality, the work is the thing that you sit your behind down at that desk and on that computer 
or read that thing. All of those things that you really don't, you're not inclined to naturally just want to immediately do. That's where the real breakthroughs happen. So, when, you know, locking myself in is like focusing on all of those things that I just don't naturally want to do, but I got to do. And, you know, doing them is, is, is consistently for that period, three months, six months, nine months. That's where you get the breakthrough. And then you come through and, you know, you definitely got to celebrate your successes, you know, take a nice vacation, go out and celebrate, make sure you have some good, you know, human connection with your friends. Let them know you're still around, you still love them. And then guess what? When you're trying to go to that next level, you're going to have to rinse and repeat and do it all again. And I feel like the hard part is as you start to grow, you start to realize that a lot of people don't understand it. And then you start to kind of like naturally start separating a bit. Not that you don't love them, not that you don't want the best for them, but the people that don't understand is hard and they may not ever understand, but you still have to go after it, right? And so that's the space I've been finding myself in more and more these days. So I just try to get myself around people that are like my tribe that understand it. I need the entrepreneurs that's like, oh, I know what you're doing. You locked in. I see you when you get back. Not the people that are like, man, where you been? You haven't been around. You different. You changed. You know, so it's just keeping that balance is uh is a big part of the journey these days. It definitely it definitely is, but you know, we have only limited time. And the older we get, the shorter our time is. And so if you have these goals that you want to achieve, man, you gotta like buckle down. Absolutely. And it's definitely not glamorous. It's not I don't, you know, I mean, I you can have a little bit of fun with some of the stuff that you do. Like, I make a game of some of the things. Like, people hang up on me. And sometimes I'm like, you know, a little bit. And uh, I'll text. I'll be like, thank you very much for hanging up on me. <laughs> I'll see stuff like that. And then I had somebody say, this woman text me back. She's like, you're welcome. Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. I'm like. Right, you just gotta keep on rolling. Doesn't it doesn't um doesn't really matter. And a lot of times we waste time about bitching, complaining about these things, that thing, that 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 that, that, that. and then we take our energy. Like that's our energy where we gotta use that to be like, okay, I'm doing this thing, whatever that is for you. It could be writing a book, it could be doing podcasts, it could be I don't know, doing content or right? creating content, whatever that is, making calls, you know, I don't know, drawing shit, whatever. No, I'm with you. And uh, yeah, and I think about that lately and it's like weighing on me a bit, you know, I, I'm not going to let it weigh on me because I'm, I'm taking the action, but I was, uh, I heard about something um, somebody did about another broker in Texas and where his business is. And I'm like, how the hell is he doing that a day? Now, I got to find out if it's real or not because somebody said they don't think it's real. But if it is real, I feel like, wow, man, I got to really step it up. You know, people think I do a lot. I mean, and compared to everybody else, yeah, but I know that there's more way more I can do. And so we have to like funnel our energy and not like get the energy vampires get us, Jordan. No, absolutely. I mean, for, for me, that's a big part of the journey. Like a big part of this battle day to day as an entrepreneur is just like managing my mindset, watching what I put into my body making sure that like i don't get around the energy vampires and if i do i'm in a mental space to just brush them off like that's a huge a huge part of the battle a huge part of the battle such a big part of the battle but you bring so many solutions to your community it's a great thing your energy is contagious and you're doing you're doing a ton for these new developers in fact i'm going to come and speak i think it's next month yep yep yeah i got a yep. I'm coming Definitely. to the Mount Airy place right there where you are now. Yep, yep. I'm yeah. Have, have you out to the uh, the center on Chew Avenue. It's uh, our community education hub. So we definitely look forward to having you out, share some yeah. hands, share some knowledge. I'm gonna I'll bring I'm gonna bring it all, good, bad, or indifferent. 
that's the that's that's the that's the what people need because people just don't need the good they need all of it that helps them to be able to understand how how it really is a lot of times people just want to speak about all of the highlight real stuff but it's really the you know the the, the setbacks and the resilience and bounce backs that really help you to get to where you try and go yeah absolutely otherwise it's just a bunch of fuff right oh we'll we'll del deliver real value on that but I, I know you will <laughs> absolutely so before we wrap up two questions for you one yep. guilty pleasure what's your guilty pleasure my guilty pleasure is honestly it's probably gonna sound corny but i just like to just get on my bike and just ride so i like to cycle if I can put in like a nice 20 mile ride at least um, and just have a headphone in my ear and see some good scenery, that's a, that's a good day. Like I found some time to do something that really matters. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. My, yeah. I like, I like riding my bike. Just kind of like, you know, at the beach, winds going, watching the waves. Absolutely. All right. And then next question. What are you personally most excited about for your future? Most excited about for my future. So I feel like I've been working so hard for all these years to like get into the position that I'm in. And I'm just really excited about like the breakthroughs that I feel like are right in front of me. And so the biggest breakthroughs are just really just taking this affordable housing development and, and doing it at scale. So like I've been blessed and fortunate to do scattered sites and, you know, dozen affordable homes at a time. I'm looking forward to just having that big breakthrough to be able to do, you know, 50, 60, 80, and just be able to completely change a, a whole section of the neighborhood and the community and just build so much beneficial things with generational wealth and workforce and employment and just like all of it just all coming together and just being able to see it all manifest because i've been everything i've been doing i feel like has been leading to this point and i'm just excited that i feel like it's really it's really about to happen that's awesome congratulations jordan on all your success and much great positive vibes for and even better with that future, it. with everything you got going on. Thank you so much for taking the time today to be on Be The Solution podcast. You definitely are a solution for you and your community, Jordan. And I look forward to seeing you uh, next month with the mentees. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It was a good time. My pleasure.